How's it going guys? My name is MLG Gamer and welcome back to another update showcase. This time we're update we're we're showcasing 1.19 the wild update. Now I know I know it's been a while, it's been some time, I've been really busy, but I'm back now, I'm able to record again. Um, so I so here I am to record this update showcase. Um, so they've added a few minor details to the to the game and then we today we're gonna be going through some of them Okay, so the first thing on the list ladies and gentlemen They have added a brand new mob called frogs Now these little guys can be found in swamps in general but they've also added a brand new biome called mangrove swamps, which I will show you in a few. I have a world ready for with ma a mangrove found. I'll show you what they look like. They're absolutely beautiful, but we've, they've added a few more new blocks. We have a uh, mangrove roots, muddy mangrove roots, mud. So you can actually make mud even in not here, not in the mangrove. All you need to do, take dirt, take your water bottle, boom. And that's mud. Um, that's your mud. And you can take that mud and put it with wheat and it will make these things, the packed mud. Then the packed mud can be used to make bricks, mud bricks, which can then be used to cut and form all the sorts of um, variants like walls, staircases, slabs, you name it. And you can use it with a stone cutter or a crafting table. But that's that's the main thing I think with the mangrove apart from the frogs. The frogs now they can be bred with slime balls. As you can see, these frogs are now trying to come near to me as long as I have a slime ball. They're 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 they're, they're, they're turn direction. So they can be bred using um, slime balls and they can use that to spawn on on water. They use it to spawn um, frog spawns. Where are they? Where are those things? Here it is. This little thing right here. So these are going to be a pitch. What's going to happen is you breed the two frogs. One is going to be pregnant, sort of similarly to like a turtle. Um, but the difference is when they place it on the water, on a particular water block, then the water block apparently has to have another water block beside it or whether it's running or a source block that's when they will put that down so preferably a lake would help the frog spawn cannot be destroyed by you so you can literally swim right through it and you won't break it um, unlike turtle eggs they don't take nearly as long to <laughs> just to, to, to hatch I think they take about like 30 seconds maybe a minute at best um, and then when they do break, they can spawn into, I think, between one and four or maybe six. I don't remember exact num number, but there's a range um, of tadpoles. The tadpoles can then be, you can then, take t you can then take them up with buckets and have yourself a bucket and a tadpole. Sorry, bucket of tadpoles, sorry, my bad. Um, so... The tadpoles will grow up depend into one of these frogs depending on which biome you put them in. If you need, if you want to know which biomes count for certain um, frogs, um, all of that is on the Wikipedia, the Minecraft game Wikipedia or whatever. Um, but certain biomes will equal certain frogs. So the colder biomes will give you the green ones. The warmer biomes like the savanna, the desert. Those will give you the warm ones and then anything else after that is temperate and so you can take up the tadpoles and move them anywhere in the world and put them in any sort of water source and you can feed them the slime balls to speed up their growth or you can wait on them to have to, to grow up and it will give you one of these frogs you know now the frogs have a very interesting ability well not an interesting ability so basically, um, they can eat slimes and magma cues, but when they eat slimes, obviously the slimes are going to drop slime balls. Um, so the tiny ones, they only eat tiny versions of both. So if it's not a tiny version, it's not good. They're not going to touch it. So if I click on this magma, if I put a magma cube down, I eat it. it's a tiny one. You see what happened right there, right? 
I don't know if you guys saw that. Did you guys see it? I don't think you saw it. Oh, yeah, you kind of did. Something appeared when one of them ate it. These things. So he dropped a frog light. Now the frog lights, hold on, are sources, light sources. So if you happen to be in a, if you happen to be in, if you happen to be in the basalt delta and you say you have in your trouble with magma cubes, these guys would be very helpful um, in those kind of situations. So the orange one just ate the magma cube. So it gave me an ochre, ochre, I can't pronounce that at all, frog lights. If the green one had eaten the magma cube, it would have given a verdant frog light. And if it was the warm one that ate it, it would have been the pearlescent frog light. Either way, we have another light source and it is awesome. Oops, I didn't mean to drop that. <laughs> My bad, whoops. Um, all right, so that's the frogs basically. Like, and they can also jump obviously, but I put honey blocks so they won't jump out because I don't want them jumping out. Um, but they look kind of cute, honestly. I think they look really cute, right? I they they really look cute. I, I I would I like the I like the addition. It really adds more life to swamps biomes because the only life we were getting in swamp biomes were pretty much mobs of the night, and that wasn't really that wasn't really doing much. So it really does add a little bit more life to the swamps any time of the day. Um, we they've also added in. Hold on. New goat horns. So we have a few goat horns here. Now, first of all, I should point out what I should point out that the goat horns only drop off of goats that ram into a mountain or into a block, preferably the mountain itself. They will break off their horns. And each goat, and each goat, as we've seen by the designs, if you if you don't remember what they look like or what they do go check out my previous video on the caves and cliffs part one i think it was that i covered it they have two horns so you can get max two horns the idea is that you need to wait until they come in and ram at you and if you can wait afk and dodge their their dash um and they hit into a wall or something like that or a block they will drop the horns now four of these belong these ones would be dropped by regular goats and four of these will be dropped by screaming goats particularly which is very very rare um ponder sing seek and feel are the ones that will drop off of normal goats and admire dream call yearn those ones will drop off of screaming goats and they can also be found in um, pillage outpost. So if you're not really into having to go find those goats, just go find out pillage outpost. Um, hopefully a chest will have one of those four. The ponders feel, sing, and they, they won't drop the scree They won't have the screaming goat ones in those outpost chests. So I'm gonna test them out for you. So this is what ponder sounds like. So that's what that sounds like. And as you can see, they have a little bit of a cooldown, so you can't use them like one after the other. Um, so that's Ponder. Uh, the next one is Sing, which sounds like this. So you could literally do your own role play. What it sounds like to me is that you could do your own role play as a jest as a jester. What do you call those things? You know, the ones that go, hear ye, hear ye, the king's announcer or whatever that you could do that you could do a role play with that um with seek what does that sound like seek sounds like this and for those who are not familiar with that sound that is the sound of the raid so whenever you start a raid you hear that sound so you could probably troll your friends that are raid just starting their house just by blowing the horn and you don't have to necessarily, you could do some trolling there. Now, the next one is called feel. Feel sounds like this. <laughs> it 
It just sounds hilarious to me. I, was, I, I don't know why that, that one sounds hilarious to me. And now, if you happen to get these from the Screaming Goat, Admire. This is what Admire sounds like. Admire sounds like this. Pretty creepy, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It sounds like someone really just, you know, could not. <laughs> they just could not, what you call it there. Like, keep it on, on, on tune or whatever, trying to call someone or maybe whatever. Now, call. Now, this is what call sounds like. And tell me if this doesn't sound familiar to you. If you still haven't gotten it yet, it's basically, it sounds a lot like the THX um, theme. It definitely sounds like a THX theme, really does bring me back. I used to watch a lot of, uh, like out there, the, the VHS tapes. So that brought me back when I heard it first. Um, and then Yearn is... So you could probably use these goat horns for to like do some sort of crazy code communication if you wanted to do it. It really, really sounds like something cool. And then dream sounds like this. Right. And as you can see, as I said about the cooldown, it affects every horn. So you can't just have multiple horns and then be like, I can just spam one after the other. They all have the same cooldown once one has been used. So you can't use them all at the same time. But those drop off goats, screaming goats, they're cool like that, you know what I mean? Um, the next thing that's been added, well, here we go. These are the deep, these are some of the deep, dark um, things that have been added. So we have reinforced deep slates, that's one. You find these in the ancient city. Um, you have, um, that's a skulk block and a skulk vein. Um, skulk blocks, you'll find them naturally if you mine them. I think they give you just experience. Skulk veins, they tend to populate the ground as well, but beside this is a skulk catalyst. Now the skulk catalyst, if you kill something over it, this, that's how it will spread, you know, the veins. So it will spread it over a wide range of, of blocks away. But I think the veins and the blocks basically allow you to store up experience. I think that's what I've heard. So basically you can kill over of them a lot of t a lot of them. You could probably bring the catalyst over to your base, near your base, so you're gonna kill some enemies. And you can probably like have it around and make it store up in veins or blocks or whatever. And as long as they get killed, enemies get killed over that, they store that experience in there. You could you could use that as a sort of like experience grinder, so that's very helpful. And over to our right here we have the skulk sensor in the middle here. And beside it, the Skulk Shrieker. Now, the basic idea of the Deep Dark is that you're not supposed to make a single sound. You're going to try and keep as quiet as possible. If you make a sound, this is what's going to happen. Hold on, wait. Come on. Hear that? So the Skulk Sensor activated. It, anything that moves, it's going to activate. And it's gonna act. And the skull sensor has an amazing ability where apparently, if it if it does detect any movement, it puts out a sort of a wireless redstone signal, which this is what causes the shriekers to activate. Now the shriekers, if they make they make the sound as you heard, normally in a normal survival they give you darkness, so you can't see for a few seconds. If I move around like this. So you see that? Second time round, it activated. Third time round. Sounds really creepy, doesn't it? Basically, if this thing reaches the third time on this counter, the warden is going to start showing up. And I will show you that is that when we reach the deep dark. It's am it is one of the most amazing mobs I've ever seen. It's basically designed as a natural disaster, but it's, it's, it's awesome. It's one of the coolest mobs. Basically, it's supposed to one shot kill you. <laughs> so you gotta be really quiet. You gotta use your 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 
be very quiet, sneak all the way. One of the things they give you actually in the ancient cities, they can give you a book called Swift Sneak between levels one and three. Level three basically allows you to sneak at a level of walking speed. So you can move faster while you're sneaking. You can get away from him a little, a little easier, just a little bit easier. They also give you these uh, little fragments of a CD. If you put them in a crafting table, about nine of them, you get a CD called Disc 5. There's something very special about that disc, um, and I plan to show it, I plan to let you guys hear what it sounds like in the gameplay. I'm going to get back to that series, don't you worry. But um, you're going to hear Disc 5, it's going to be, um, it sounds very interesting. And then they also have the Echo Shard. Now the echo shards, you may think, but this ain't useful for nothing. Why would I need an echo shard? Well, eight of them combined with a compass forms these type of compasses, the recovery compasses. And the recovery compasses basically just allow you to track where you last died. So they work specific to dimension. So if you died in the end, for example, you can then use the recovery compass and be like, okay, well, I can find my way back. I can find my way back to where I last died. Uh, find my stuff easier, you know. You don't have to be like, oh, I don't remember where I left, where I died exactly. So, but I know my, but I can find a basic idea of the direction if I do that. And that works with Overworld, in the Nether, in the End. So that's really cool. You can find your way, find the things that you want to find. All right, so I'm going to take you guys. Jeez, that just gave me chills for a second. Let me just fly it for it. I want to fly. Come on. Let me fly. I guess not. Alright, well, I'm going to take you guys to the deep dark. You're going to get to see it for yourself. And I'm going to make a whole heap of noise and I'm going to spawn the warden. It's going to be epic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the deep dark biome. Now, look at this place. It's huge. This is an ancient city, ladies and gentlemen. So, here is the deep dark biome. Here are the, uh, well, pretty much everything you need to see. All the different blocks you can see. There's also, so the idea is in this place, you're supposed to keep sneaking. I'm in creative right now, but yeah, the idea is you need to keep sneaking. Um, there's also wool. Wool also prevents um, any sort of sound effects. So I guess I can find one of those. Uh, I guess I can find one of those. Uh, what do you call those things? The shriekers. So here's you can see some chests right here. You can see some chests right here. This up. If you open a chest, that also activates the, the thing as well. See, as you can see, you get the the the, the fragments. So opening chests is also very risky because they also make noise. As you see, this one gets swift sneak. So yeah, they, they this is where this is where you get the the recovery compass. So as you can see, making noise really is a bad idea. Let me see if I can find one of those uh, shriekers, shall we? I want to, I so badly want to show you guys what this dude does, this warden. But it's crazy. The warden's absolutely messy. Like he, he does not play around. He's basically a natural disaster. You're not supposed to kill him. You just leave him alone, apparently. Why this new music, by the way? Alright, so if I activate this, I don't know if this gives me darkness, same way, but let me, let me, uh, see if I can activate the sound. So basically, you, you add it, we're gonna, I'm gonna drop down, come on, drop down, drop down, come on, oh my gosh, give, something's giving double ladies and gentlemen. Trying to get it to drop down. Not like that, though. No. Like this. So if I move. Excuse me, I'm not going to activate. Come on, activate. That 
to face the thing. It was actually what you call it there. Give me darkness. So I, I think if I move again to the other one, the warden, it should. Pretty creepy. You hear that? That's the warden, ladies and gentlemen. See there? This is the warden. Oh, shit, calm the ground. This guy's epic. Now he's gonna be looking for players. He's gonna be like, yo, I'm looking for players. I don't trust them. Any sounds they make, you're gonna be in trouble. And they basically give you darkness every 30 seconds, I think. Or every few minutes. Basically, they're As you can hear, it sniffs you, it looks for you. Um, it's, it's a, it basically one shot kills you if you're in a nether armor, two shots and you're dead. So, yeah, use your projectiles, distract, distract it, basically. Do what you need to, but yeah, don't piss this thing off because you, you'll die. I'm gonna go in survival and we're gonna test this out. I want sneak mode. I'm gonna purposely die to it just because I wanna show you how bad this creature is. It's bad. Um let me see. I want what do I want? Game mode. Slash game mode. And I want S. So it should be in survival. I'm in survival now. Okay, so if I move, if I make a sound, see I'm in darkness. Do you see how dark my screen is right now? I can't see anything. Literally can't see anything. So watch this now, if I make a move. Hey, yo, warden, come over. I'm over here, bro. I don't know where he is, I'm so scared. There he is. Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see that? One shot, dead. That's all you need. And in a netherite armor, it's only two shots. So basically, that thing is crazy. And to make it worse, if it doesn't kill like that, if it, can, if it can't reach you, all it needs to do is this thing, this sonic boom. It's crazy. One of the most awesome but scariest mobs I have ever seen in all of my Minecraft career. Now, there is one more mob that I want to show you that they've added. It's a very helpful mob. It's a little nicer than this thing. So hold on one second. I'm gonna be. Go I'm gonna put you guys in a woodland mansion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a woodland mansion. Now you might notice something a little different inside those little cages that you find in the prisons of the woodland mansion ladies and gentlemen these are the alleys so for those who this is a brand new mob that was added as a result of a mob vote i certainly voted for it i love i love the concept so this is hold on let me see if i can i want to see if i can get in get in there so i can show, so I can show you it's a little slow but i can i can do it but yeah, this is the alley, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this little fairy thing. Basically, it's gonna fly around aimlessly, just do whatever it wants, be free. Um, if you can give it an item, any item at all, it will follow you. And that, and also, that item that it has in its hand, those are the items it's gonna collect and look for around the world for you. So they're very helpful. And also, they have a magical ability. Hold on, I'm gonna show it to you. It's gonna be awesome. Where is the amethyst? Oh, it's right here, isn't it? 
Here it is. If I give it other items, it will just follow me. If I give it an amethyst, watch this. Give the items alley. Watch this. One alley. Okay, so basically, the idea is you're supposed to give them. You're supposed to give them. Um, you're supposed to give them. I think I don't know what the chances are for this to happen. But basically, if they're wholly an, an, an amethyst, they will multiply, so they can they can duplicate themselves, and it's really cool. I hope they do give do do it, but I'm not sure if they will. You you probably see in the Minecraft gameplay if this doesn't happen. I'll give it a few more minutes, but basically, they're supposed to be able to you're supposed to be able to follow you if you if you give them something. So they'll follow you if they if that if they're playing but they're not doing something creative. Um, but the idea is you can kind of use the, the the amethyst to multiply them. I don't think it's showing. Maybe I need to do it in creative mode. But basically, you're supposed to give, to give them the thing, the amethyst, and they will an amethyst shard, and they will multiply. I believe. I don't know if it's amethyst shard or just amethyst in general. And, oh, also another thing as well, they will drop the items specifically where they where you want them to. If you put a music note box next nearby them, and they will be like, okay, that's my drop-off spot. They'll acknowledge it and they'll be like, that's my drop-off spot. Also, much like parrots, they can dance to jukebox music. So that's really cool. Um, they really, they really, but you can kind of, you can even use the, the clone idea. To kind of um, you can kind of use that to kind of um, make your own farm, certain item farms. If you want to do that, it's quite it's pretty helpful if you can't get them. Like for example, for me, I know that I would probably use these if I say for example my chickens lay a bunch of eggs, but I can't get them all because I can't really bother wait to see them hatch. They can go pick and give them, give it an egg, and they'll pick up the eggs around the area for me, and then I can ask them to drop it into my house, and I'll be like, okay, good. There's my eggs ready. You know what I mean? So the LA is pretty helpful. They can be found in woodland mansions, but they can also be found in pillager outposts in those little cages that you see. So it's a, you can either find an iron golem in those cages or the alleys flying around. Either way, these things are relatively easy to find. Relatively, um, like I said, I'm pretty sure the whole amethyst thing, they can clone. What's this zombie doing here? What the heck? Um, but they can clone, I'm pretty sure. Um, multiply with it. Um, but unfortunately, when I'm seeing it, I guess they have to do it in survival, maybe? I don't know. But I'll give it a shot. I'll see if I can go back and create it later on and try it out. The next thing I need to show you is the mangrove swamp. It looks beautiful and it, there's something else that they added there as well okay ladies and gentlemen this here is the mangrove swamp this is I accidentally broke that but this is the mangrove swamp so basically this is what you'll see if you happen to encounter a mangrove you see some very interesting things like these different roots I think they also grow differently or something like that they, they have like, these things called not just saplings but there's more to the, to the proper like mangrove not mangrove roots but it it, it looks amazing though um, but this is what a mangrove swamp looks like it looks very beautiful there's also something else they added um, to the wild update and I forgot to mention um, they added in where is it? 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 I don't see it. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Boat with a chest, and it all works out for all different types of um, wood. Mangrove also since they added mangrove trees. Obviously, this separate wood stuff that you could make with them, you can 
totally do that. So now, regarding my, my boat with chest, all you need to do is make a chest and make a boat, put them together in a crafting table, and that's what you got. So for those people who had issues like, you know, wait, say you're getting treasure chests on the seas, now you can have something that, you know, that, that you can... Oh my god, did I seriously just... Yeah, you can actually, like... How you how you activate the chest? I don't know how you activate the chest. But either way, if you had a problem trying to get, if you had a problem trying to get, um, if say you got a chest back in your world, um, such a lot of chest. Suppose you got a lot of um, unwanted stuff from all your treasures that you we're going through with the underwater. Now you have something that can do that. I don't know how to open the, the chest. That's my only issue. I have to figure that out on my own. But basically, you could put stuff in there. Actually, I think I want to do it. Sneak. Open. There you go. So, so you can now put storage on the on the seas. So that's pretty cool. So they added that in. So. That's basically it for the wild update. So let me just go in third person. Okay, so I quite love the wild update. Um, it's a very interesting update. I can't wait. I've, I've been trying to search for Deep Dark in my original world, which is also another reason why I've been so busy because I've been trying to do it myself so I could find it. And I haven't been successful, but I've been. I like the, this new update. The only criticism I would have is, hold on now, the only criticism that I would have is the goat horns, right? I appreciate their variety, being able to like, blow the horns, you have, oh yeah, it turned nighttime, I'm sorry about that. So you see the zombies, you know why. Um, I appreciate the variety of the horns, I like that you can have different sounds with it. My only criticism I would have for it is the fact that I was kind of hoping you'd be able to summon like your own, you know, team, you know? My thoughts were it probably would be able to summon like pillagers that are on your team and then they would color code it to show that this is yours or they could even do a thing where I don't know if you guys remember if you've ever been on classic Minecraft they used to have those steves with iron swords. They could have those summoned in front of you and they would just be walking around you, protecting you like bodyguards or so, and then they would despawn after five, like five minutes so you don't have to like constantly spawn them in and it just, you know, crashes your game, you know? Like, it would have been cool to see something like that to be able to summon your own mobs. But other than that, I appreciate the variety. The update is a solid update, I will say. Um, yeah. So, uh, that is the wild updates in total. If I miss anything, all of it will be in the description. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten it. I've covered everything. I'm not missing anything. Um, so, yeah. So, hit the like on this video for this new wild update. Um, why not subscribe to the channel? I... Um, I'll, I'm trying to make sure I post more on every weekend if I can. It hasn't been as recent, but I am getting back to the swing of things now that I've sorted myself out. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start going back to my weekend uploads again. And uh, yeah, subscribe, hit the like, and ring that notification bell so you know when next another video comes out by me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.